We're going to take a quick look at 2.5.8 more operations. It's a very basic um, Java program building upon a lot of what we looked at, but it does have a new twist or two. So it says, let's look at the calculator class. We have a calculator class that allows us to add, subtract, multiply, and divide doubles. So here we go. Uh, one thing that's different right off the get-go is we don't have any instance variables in this class. But we do have some basic methods. One's called sum, multiply, another divide, and another is subtract. And each one of them takes two arguments, two doubles as parameters, and then they are void, so they don't return anything, but they are printing out some sentences for us and doing some simple math calculations. So these are pretty good methods to look at to gain basic understanding because we all understand what sum does and multiply and so on and so forth. So those are already built for us in the calculator class. Um, if we jump over to our main method, that I believe in yours was blank to start. But if we come over to the exercise directions, it says in the main method, ask that for two doubles, then print the sum difference product and quotient. So here we go. We're going to uh, ask for user input. So we know we have to have the uh, Java scanner utility imported. And we're going to have to make a new scanner object. Now, when we first used, started using user input, this line may not have made much sense, but hopefully it does now, because what we're saying is here, from the scanner class, make a new variable called input. That is a new scanner object that takes the argument whatever someone types into the system. So then after that, we print out, please enter a number with a decimal. And I'm going to take their input, the next double. Um, that's a method that's written in the scanner class that we don't see, but it looks familiar, like the methods we've been using apply it, call it on the variable input, or the object input, and assign it to the variable double one, which is a double. So we've been doing that all along. Um, and we're going to ask for a second one right below it. So at this point here in this block, I've asked the user for two decimal inputs. Now, one thing that's really different for me in this class is that we never uh, used a a constructor class from the Java calculator class. If we look over here, this is where it's really different. There's no constructor. And if you think about it, our constructors always specified what the arguments were to make an object. And they would take those arguments or parameters and assign them to the instance variables. We don't have any of that. So we don't actually need a constructor in the calculator class to make an object over in the main method. So I'm going to come down here to line 29, scroll down a little bit. Um, and uh, you can see what I'm doing here is I made a, I'm sorry, on line 25, I made a new object from the calculator class called add. And it just says new calculator. So it is an object from the calculator class made without a constructor in the calculator class. And we need to create objects if we're going to use the methods that we saw. Once I've created this object called add, then I can call the sum method from the calculator class using the arguments of double one and double two, which are the decimals that were input by the user up above. And it's going to call that method the sum method. So I'm jumping back to calculator. Here's sum method. It's going to, first of all, uh, calculate a result with those two decimals. And then it's going to print out this nice long sentence that says x plus y is equal and to whatever the result was. So that's how that method works. But before I run a method, I have to have an object from the class to call it on. So I made one called add. Same thing hold true for the sub or the subtract object right below it. And I made one for multiply. And I made one for divide. So the key things from this uh, little exercise, more operations, is that I don't need a constructor method in a class to be able to make an object from it if I'm not asking for any kind of parameters. And secondly, I need to create an object if I'm going to use any of the methods that are written in a class so that I can call them on the object and execute them. Hope that was helpful.